He said, Donnie is one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. Comic relief is the best antidote to the trials of life, especially when you're grinding on the road. Donnie is a king from S.A. Martinez. Wow. There you go. Um, uh, yeah. Fuck, I'm stoked about that. <laughs> High praise. Am I supposed to? I, do I got to? Do I got to respond to that? <laughs> I am serious about a lot of stuff and about work, but most of the time, it's like you can be. I live. I work in an environment where you can kind of be a little bit loose and and where we're all living together. To be uptight and be an asshole it sucks. So I'd rather have fun doing what I love to do. And it's like, and if it makes somebody laugh and kind of makes the whole day a lot better, fuck, let's have a good time. <laughs> Hello, Excitables, and welcome to the 311 Odyssey podcast. I'm your co-host, Ark Sensor. With me are the usual suspects, Jay Two-Tone and B-Love. Today's guest with us, he's walked his path from the world of skateboarding into the music business with bands like No Doubt, Pearl Jam, and a few other tours with our boys from 311. He plays in his own band, Loose Trucks, and even has credits on IMDb. Let's hear it for Donnie Spada. Welcome, Donnie. What's IMDb? It's a mu- movie, uh, internet movie database. So you have a oh. couple entries in your credits with the Pearl Jam film and a couple other things. So, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Who knew? Well, someone out there did because they <laughs> followed your career and created it for you. So there you go. Well, well, thanks, whoever yeah. that is. <laughs> no idea. Yeah. Maybe we could look into that for you. But uh, welcome, man. How you guys doing? Doing wonderful. Thanks for being here, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, Appreciate I guess you all love the band, right? That's what it's oh, all yeah. about. Yeah, we're trying to, yeah. uh, you know, talk to anyone and everyone that will talk to us that worked for them or toured alongside them or, you know, just has any kind of experiences. And, uh, yeah, that's the that's the theme for the Odyssey. Well, this, is the perfect, this is the perfect environment because I'm ready to talk some shit about nope. all of them. I'm ready <laughs> oh. to drop, spill everything. All right. Because, you know, I never signed anything so I could do whatever I want. Sounds good, <laughs> and and none of this will be edited, so that's totally perfect. Oh yeah, yeah, just we're going raw, raw, <laughs> straight. So I guess oh, we'll start right. at the beginning then, man. Uh, I know that you were uh, in the skateboarding scene for a little while, right? Early on as a youngster, long little time. While. Yeah, still am. Still am. Awesome. Um, I love skateboarding, and that somehow, if you just want to tell us how you know your career in skateboarding open to pathways to meet people into the music business you know well i don't really i don't really have a career in skateboarding but i love skateboarding yeah it was you know i grew up i grew up in orange county in anaheim and and where i grew up it's a i was really lucky because it's just skateboarding it was just part of my life we just did it and there was a little park there called sadlands you know and you can look it up on the internet on the world wide web yeah you're a member of the sad posse correct yeah, yeah yeah well it's kind of a you know just we're just sadlanders you know and it's just it's one of those things where we always had a crew together and with that skateboarding and punk rock came together and you know and just it was one of those things where being from orange county you would have the social distortion guys some of the members just kind of showing up at the park or you have the agent orange guys showing up at the park the di guys you know um agent orange you know ts well it's like you know, so you'd have like random these music things going on, and then not only that, you had all these pros that would come from all over the world because it was in magazines and it was in videos at the time. Somebody from out of town would go with their family to go to Disneyland. It was right down the street or Knott's Berry Farm, so they would just take a little hey, hey, can we go to Sadlands? It's this spot right in Anaheim, and we'd go there, but. A lot of it revolved with, with skateboarding, this music is, you know, the diversity of skateboarding, and I believe the diversity of music is kind of the same thing. In punk rock and skateboarding, they go kind of hand in hand in, in one way, it's because people hated it. People hated us, mm-hmm. you know, and we kind of loved it because people, because it was our own thing. It's the same mm-hmm. thing with punk rock. People hated us yeah. because we did our own thing, and they weren't, we weren't accepted. We were just kicked out, but we loved it. 
but in the you know in some ways too is we were always like going well would we wouldn't be great to be accepted but we don't want everybody to accept us we want to keep we want to be our own thing we want to be accepted right. but we want to be rebels and we'll do you know what i mean it's kind of a selfish type of thing well sort of it's kind of you, like oh um, you're you're ahead. accepted by each other i mean you found your own exactly niche. yeah Exactly. And that, and the thing too is, is you in skateboarding, you do everything yourself. It's not a team thing. You know what I mean? It's all about you and what, how, how far you want to take it, you know, and how good you get. There's no, I mean, there's coaches now and it's weird, but they're just, you still got to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You still got to do your thing. Sure. And it's, it's, yeah, yeah. It was totally self-expression. And that's kind of what drew me also the whole music thing, you know, it's kind of the same thing, but punk rock and go, being from that community, it just, it was huge. It was huge for me. And, you know, you look back at some of the people and you read some of these skateboarding articles and people talk about what an influence on my little spot was. And the two guys that grew up skating that were very famous skateboarders, you know, both of them are in the Skateboarding Hall of Fame, influenced so many people around the world. You know, it was crazy. And I was part of that. So I was lucky. And with that, you know, I have an older brother and um, he liked to hang out with the Agent Orange guys. And, you know, he was older and he was able to go to shows. And so the whole idea was I'd keep come home. I'm like, how is the show? And he's like, oh, we got I was backstage, you know, just helping the band Agent Orange out, you know, meeting these people. I'm like, wow, I want to do that, you know. And so I kind of got my. Like kind of that was that was kind of the niche of it, yeah. you know, of kind of the taste of I wanted to kind of hang out with with in music and do music. Even though I'm a I'm a horrible guitar player, I would you know, I I I it's like I would try and learn how to play guitar and then I'm like oh skateboarding, and then I I you know I can never sit down and actually, you know, there, it takes a lot. It's yeah, it's an ADD thing I think, but. But so what what's going on with that is one of my one of my one of my best friends in uh in junior high school, which is right next to Sadlands, um, played in this band called No Doubt. And uh, you know, as as time's going on, we you know, we became closer, closer friends. We became uh you know, we both graduated and he was still in the band and and there was nothing really going on with No Doubt. And uh he was like, Hey, I'm gonna try this at the time there was like all these three piece bands that were kind of doing their own thing. And like the funk thing was happening, like the two, four, seven spies or 24, seven spies, um, you know, fire hose was going on. Um, you know, the chili peppers were just starting to kind of really kind of take off at the time. So everybody was in this kind of funk thing. And Chris, who was the, who was the drummer and, the, and no doubt, he was like, man, this ain't going nowhere. I'm going to do this. I'm tired of, I'm tired of booking all these shows or whatever and being part of doing all this stuff for all these eight band members. Gwen's never going to be able to go anywhere because her parents will never take her. Any. It was like, I'm tired of the bullshit. So I'm going to go and start with a three piece and I'm going to party and I'm going to get fucked up and it's going to be raging. <laughs> Just the three of us. We're going to go on tour, world tour. Here we go. And you know, that didn't work out. Yeah. If, but, if only it was that easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, and so at the time too is both both bands would play together all the time. And there's this place called in Riverside called Spankies that they would play at a lot. And um the both bands and and so you know, I and and Eric Stefani would come down to Sadlands too, the original singer of No Doubt would come down to Sadlands too and hang out. You know, because it was just a place where people want to drink beer or something like that. Just and it was a cool moonscape park. So it was like and the No Doubt guys like Gwen and Eric, they went to uh, they went to the next high school like over down the street. And then Chris and um, and who's the other? Chris and Tony and Eric went to Anaheim High School, which is down the street too as well, in the opposite kind of ways. And then you know, and Adrian lived in Cyprus, which is not that far away from that area. So that's kind of you know we had like we had the connection was there with the sad with with me and. And the No Doubt guys. And so I just started working for him. I mean, just kind of hanging out. Well, it's kind of like they asked they asked Chris, he goes, do you think it would be all right if Donnie comes and works with us? And he goes, I don't know. Ask him yourself. I don't care. 
Like he was just like didn't didn't want to deal with all the bullshit. Yeah, it's like going fuck it, just leave me alone, man. I'm I'm trying to just I'm trying to I'm gonna be in a party plan, three piece punk band, you know, and funk, and we're gonna play we're gonna play the world. It's gonna be crazy. You guys are gonna be stuck in Anaheim, you know. Suck it, you know. And it yeah. So that's kind of you know, but I didn't know I didn't know what the hell I was doing, you know, when I first started. It just it took a long time and getting kind of putting in the um in the pit as you say of learning how to do all the stuff because it just for me it was just you know i'd roll the amps on and kind of learn how to set up the drums and you know and kind of barely tune because remember i don't know how to play guitar or anything like that i kind of just you know weaseled my way through it yeah so. that seems to be kind of like a common theme from the roadies we talked to that started in the early days it's like we didn't know what we were doing we just kind oh, of no. Hell no. You Put know, it was crap crazy. together and figured it out and as we went, you know. I you know, it, it it's so much it's so weird how you just try and pull things together and you try and get invented about how to make it easier. You know? Like I remember I I got this tool like I saw somebody with a work box, you know, to put all their t- tools in it. and I'm like going, I'm gonna bring a toolbox out, the metal toolbox. <laughs> and you know, it's like bringing it into this club or something like that. It's like lifting it up and on stage, it's like like the stuff you do, but you don't know. You know, you're just trying to make things work and trying to make, trying to fake it till you make it, I guess. And, you're right. You know, and learn as you go. Find ways so to smooth was, that process. Yeah. I, I've even yeah, heard. Yeah. I've even heard Nick say that before in his early days. Just fake it till you make it. Tell people you know yeah, man. somebody. Make a contact with somebody and just keep rolling forward. Yeah, I, you know, in in this industry, if you're an asshole, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. you got to kind of be all right. You got to be able to deal with the punches of what happens, mm-hmm. you know? So you got to kind of be some, somewhat patient. I mean, there's a lot of people that are assholes that have jobs in this industry, but I don't know. I don't like to work with them, <laughs> you know? Out of so. curiosity, the two skateboarders you said were in the Hall of Fame. Who who are yeah. we talking about? Uh, Neil Blender was one of them. And uh, you might know Neil Blender – but if you spell Neil backwards, it's lean. So whenever you hear in snowboarding, because snowboarding is, lean. you know, the lean air, that was Neil Blender. Ah. You know, um, something every day. the sad plant. How about the sad plant? You ever hear the sad plant? Just from Tony Hawk games. <laughs> Sadlands. Nice. That's where oh, that happened. Okay. Nice. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, so it's like there, and, and the other skateboarder was this guy named Lester Kasai. And he was like one of Tony Hawk's traveling buddies back in the day so they saw for the the trick the benihana or you know mm-hmm. stuff like that because lester japanese you know benihana wow. kind of madonna's it's like there's it all part of that whole thing so a lot of tricks were invented at sadlands because it's kind of a small area and neil would can do all that stuff so you know why didn't so, i know that you were in skateboarding oh i don't know because you love you love rollerblades, so we wouldn't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you guys both had a, a form of skating yeah. that led you to hey, three eleven. Hey man, I don't. I, I can hang out with you. You're the to your feet. <laughs> yeah, you try it without the wheels, man. That stuff strapped your feet, buddy. Come on. Dude. Hey, hey, I, I, no, no, I no. Li- no. I was living in Venice for. I don't know, eight years. And dude, I had skateboards laying around. I used to go skateboard all the time, but it's, it's odd because I was in the at first X games and yeah. I, I ended up making friends with Tony Hawk, yeah. um, hanging out with Danny way. We didn't become friends. He was, yeah. he didn't like rollerbladers too much, but Mike Vallely, dude, he was so friendly and yeah. hung out with us. Um, dude, I got cornered in a bar one night it was only one bar that was open in the evenings and colin mckay came over and was like dude i really like your style you have nice yeah. style and then for like an hour he I, I got preached about how important style is yeah in skate. absolutely absolutely i was just like in awe and then kareem campbell comes over and, and then they start talking to us about style and we just end up talking about style and and like you're saying like freedom of, of expression yeah. and one person's like Ollie 360 is like completely different from another person's, you know, hundred percent. And 100%. that's the beauty of it. And 
and I can understand where you start to get like the training process and you start coaching, it takes that style out. It, it, it sends it towards like an Olympic style sport where it has to be perfect. You know, you're yeah. min maxing everything. Skating is not perfect. Yeah. It's, it's, it's freedom of expression. And, you know, I, there's, there's skaters that can go out and do like a, you know, a 900 or whatever, or, somebody has a beautiful 360 and to me like i appreciate the beautiful 360 over just like over spins you know I, well that's that's another thing it's like kind of like guitar players it's like you got a guy that's a shredder it's like I, i'd rather see something that's musically i'd rather right. see somebody you know what i mean because that's to me that's that's what it is so it's like is it style or is it technical I, right. you know, so here's a, here's a crazy thing that people don't understand. It's like the, the difference between, and the big thing in my era was Tony Hawk and Christian Hussoy. The whole, the whole deal was Christian Hussoy was nothing but style, you know, and then Tony Hawk was technical as one of the most, you know, he was the tech guy. And that's why he won so many questions because technically when you're judging a thing, it's, they're looking at about the tricks and what you're doing. They don't judge on style. You know, which is important to me because I do when to, early Tony Hawk, you know, it was amazing to see him do those tricks and being there and like going, oh, my God, I, you know, he's flipping his board, all kinds of stuff. But look at Christian, you know, carve the fuck out of that bowl and do it like a like a 10 foot grind, you know, and a I sweet know, fucking right? just just like one of the most amazing laybacks ever is like going as smooth as hell. and like going, well, that I'd rather watch somebody just rip that but Tony's doing all this crazy shit that you just go. Yeah. So it's so hard to judge. And, you know, and then you go back about the Olympics and you talk about the X games. It's like, like, uh, you know, it's, it's tough because I'd rather watch somebody go super, super fast and do these long ass board slides, you know, and long ass stand up grinds and just do a big old floating air and just go as fast as you can, because I love that type of skateboarding. Right. But technical shit, I get it. It's pretty fucking gnarly. You know what I mean? It's it's like that's some some crazy stuff. But I love. It's weird. It's I don't know. I don't know where I'm yeah, going at this point. I I mean I judge skating contests and I was in a ton of skating contests and yeah, it's it's it is kind of a it does come down to a numbers game, mm-hmm. but thankfully eventually in rollerblading and I think they do this in snowboarding and skateboarding now they have a style category. So yeah. it does get thrown into the mix. But yeah, if someone has a beautiful 360 that grabbed, laid out, gorgeous, perfect landing, and then someone else does a 720 that's just not as pretty and barely landed it, how do you judge that? Which one yeah. gets the yeah. better points? I'd rather see somebody rip clean a and ramp controlled is my pick. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean honestly. I'd rather see some I'd rather see somebody rip a ramp and just shred all over it and just you know, and then rather than seeing some one little kid come up and do a 900, it's like going, yeah, I get it, man. But you go to Woodward and you, you know what I mean? It's a totally different thing. You got a, you got a coach, you got all this bullshit. It's like the kids are ripping now too. It's like, Ooh. it's a weird thing. It's so weird, you know? Yeah. And, and I, I, I was going to say something and I'm sorry, cause this is what I'll do is I'll forget a lot of this <laughs> shit. Cause it's okay. like, but um, yeah, it's just like, it's skateboarding and you know and and with rollerblading and all that other stuff snowboarding it's like style it's like ah yeah no it's it's weird it's it's to judge all that stuff it's weird to me it's like you know yeah well Well, you guys gotten video game status i mean what they're doing on skateboards yeah oh yeah for sure Boarding is it's like how we played video games back in the 90s we're like this is never yeah. possible and now there are people are doing it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 well sadlands sadlands was in the tony hawk video game as the skateboard heaven oh yeah that is right yeah which is crazy to me because that tells you you know tony well because tony went you know there wasn't really international flights coming out of lax so tony would come from san diego uh, to Anaheim to stay at Lester's house and they'd huh. fly to LAX to go all international stuff or, you know what I mean? So that's kind of why Tony would come t- to Sadlands and, you know, and those guys at Sadlands were good and Tony it, couldn't it, keep up with some of them, you know? 
<laughs> it's it's an interesting yeah. park, dude. I like it. It it's hard it's to skate. Cool. It's not they're very easy. And then if yeah. you got locals, they're not gonna really let if you, you can't go and just barge in because it's a freight train on how it runs. <laughs> so and it, you got and there's a lot of obstacles. So it made a it made a lot of people I guess, you know, anything with obstacles or stuff that's hard to skate and you're local, yeah, and you learn how to rip that, it's just gonna make you better you know, as a skateboarder, because you just can adapt to a lot more stuff. Like, yeah. you know, so. I love I the know. landscaping of it. It's great. It's yeah. like ergonomically made. Wasn't made for skateboarding. Not at all. Had nothing to it do was. with skateboarding. It's just the moon yeah. landing is what it was. That's so. interesting. But yeah, it, that was my home place. That's where I pretty much grew up. That's what that's what uh, made me who I am. Today, got you involved in the so. bands and uh, making some friends out there over time. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. So, so do you remember from that point what the when the first time was that you actually heard Three Eleven? Um, through, through um, no doubt because we were we were um, because at the time you know you know. 24 7 spies was coming around you know and then there's all this like underground music coming up and 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 no doubt i think we were going to play with 311 and doing some shows and kind of meeting them you know what i mean and they heard about them and you're still working you know, and they kind of yeah. just they just kind of work together and stuff like that and it was that's kind of and it's like going and it the weird thing was always and I don't know how much of this is true, but from my understanding is whenever we would do outside of California, you know, we would do it with 311 because they had that base. But when they went to L.A. or something like that, they would it would kind of be swapping, from yeah. my, you know, because they no doubt had the base there. There was like their hometown. It's kind of like the Funk Junkies going to Arizona, you know, because the Funk Junkies were so huge, you know, it's like. 311 opening up for the funk junkies no doubt open up for the funk junkies because that was their town it's like you know so that's kind of how i got i think that's 311 and i saw oh i remember i saw uh what do you call it their first video on like this local video e right video. oh 311 yes first video. yeah <laughs> yes that's where i first heard them actually and then we did a show with them and i remember because you can you can ride into them and get the cassette tape of mm -hmm. the single. And I had the cassette. They sent me the cassette tape. 90. It's been so long since I've seen that video. Yeah. But that was a great video, man. It was a great time of music. Yeah. It's recently music been was remastered. Fucking incredible then, man. There's mm -hmm. so much. Oh, yeah. We were just talking about this then. Just recently at my friend's uh, funeral, it's like it, the music was really fucking great then. There was so many, so much good shit coming out of LA 90. too. Yeah. You know? Well, I it's think. Like... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I I was um I remember my first show that I saw. No doubt, they were opening up for three eleven, and I was doing like just like a little West Coast tour, like five or six shows in a row, I think. And Corn was the other band that was opening up for them, but No Doubt played in a rodeo in Santa Barbara, I think, or yeah, yeah, in the middle, yeah, 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 or somewhere. It, it was, was a rodeo. And I it was wait, did no who it was corn corn played on that thing and that was the only show we did I think right maybe yeah and I think corn was with you was on tour with three eleven and we just came in and did that one show it was kind of a yeah. weird it's a weird one off thing so yeah, yeah I was at the, yeah I remember that it was really dusty and Dirt it smelled butters. like horses yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah I was like what am, what is going on here it was dusty yeah. too yeah yeah. I actually learned yeah. somewhat recently that Nick actually, when he was in Unity and they went out to California and did a run out there, that Unity opened for No Doubt in huh. like 98. I believe it was wow. the Roxy. Yeah. Like their, their bond goes that far back. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. And anytime I think of 90s music, it's like 311 and No Doubt are right there. They're yeah. they're together. You know what I mean. Man, wouldn't would, would ninety eight or eighty eight? I think she meant. Jen. I think she meant eighty eight. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You said ninety eight. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was either eighty eight or eighty nine. 
was what I meant. Gotcha. I got it. Yeah, I don't even think I was working for No Doubt at that time with when Nick was doing that thing. It was I think it was still probably Chris in the band. Maybe he was playing drums. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was like still the three horn players. You know, and there's no Gabe and Steve yet. You know, mm -hmm. so. And then that that show in Santa Barbara, there was no Gabe and Steve yet either. Oh, really? It was it was still the three of them. I think the three horn players, I believe. So oh. Eric was still playing in the band. You know. Um, wow. Chris okay. wasn't Chris wasn't in the band yet. I mean, he let Chris left the band at that time. So. But yeah. So. Band, Are you still that in was... contact with Chris. Yeah. 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 I don't like, talk to him. Why did I quit? <laughs> no, you well, you, you know, the people always talk about this. It's like, and Chris isn't Chris isn't bummed. I mean, he says he's not bummed, but who knows? But the, uh -huh. the reality, but the reality of it is, would have would have been what it is. I mean, come on, that changed. If Chris stayed in the band, that it would have changed the whole dynamic the of ingredients everything. Ingredients matter. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like you can't. You're changing. You're altering right. the whole entire world. You know, yeah. doing certain things. So true enough. It you know. So yeah, it's you never know what would happen. Yeah. So I wish they would. That would be the tour, though. The No Doubt three eleven run would be fucking insane. Yeah. So yeah, it would. I see No yeah. Doubts actually back on the. Uh, it looks like they're on the lineup for Coachella. It's been yeah. a while since they played. I think so. It looks like they're getting things back together. It's. It's been a while. It's gonna be crazy. You yeah. know. Bananas. Even. I'm. I'm I don't, I don't know if they're going to play that. I hope not. <laughs> that's not no doubt. That's not no doubt. <laughs> that's, I know. that's good. Yeah. 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 Couldn't it's, resist. Sorry. But who knows? Who knows if that's, they have to do that, you know? So <laughs> who knows? The, who knows the contract? This is where that, what they got to do so to get them back together. I don't know, but I'm stoked, you know, I'm stoked to do, you know, I, I, I think I'm doing it and, you know, oh, yeah. It should well, be I think fun. The, the last time I That'll saw awesome. you was No Doubt's Friends and Family show or something like that at the forum. No, Trish and we I came. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was back That's with the last time I saw by you. then, wasn't it? Wasn't I? No, that was in like 2014 or 15. Has it been that long since I've worked for those guys? Wow. Huh. Wow, that's crazy. Trisha, yeah. Trisha says you were talking to Zendaya and, and Trisha. And Trish was walking over to talk to you, and Zendaya thought she was coming over to talk to her. <laughs> Psych. Psych Zendaya. That's when they like redid the forum and made it into a concert venue. Yeah, I made it to really, really nice now because it used to be it a is. shithole. It's that was just a fun show. A sh yeah. Dude, one of my most memorable, no doubt, moments was Denver Mammoth Event Center, and me and my friend went to taco bell and then the whole band was there eating taco bell yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh hey yeah. guys what's going on you know and i told him i was a big 311 fan and then they they opened up for 311 and nick came out on stage and did like a verse from random where he mentions no doubt yeah and the crowd went wild was that was that at the mammoth events was that with 311 too yeah no doubt was opening up for 311 yeah yeah. Was that in the middle when they used to have the stage in the middle of the yeah. mammoth event? Yep. That was great. No, That's so like the wall. Oh, they, they went up again. Yeah. They just started to build the back wall because they used to do, set it up in the middle. You know, oh, really? the, like it was an oval it was in the middle and it was really weird. So, and then they just, then they put it towards the back end. I like that place. And and that know, place is great. I saw MC Hammer there one time. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Pantera. Were, there's oh. that there's that porn shop that's right next to it, you know, the one of the corner or just No, not me, dude. I don't, I don't know. know. That. <laughs> Where is it? I'm not gonna say anything anymore. Like, speaking, I guess, speaking about three eleven and, some, and no doubt. Some <laughs> something that With happened that I'm not gonna talk about. Yeah. Oh, let me put that in my notes. I've never been there, just so you know. <laughs> and and I never and I never went and said, "Hey guys, I'm gonna walk back to the hotel. I'll see you guys later." And like 20 minutes later, I'm just ha it's not me walking out of this this shop. Not somebody else. Mm -hmm. It looks like me. And this the band in the van driving by sees this guy that looks just like me coming out of the porn <laughs> shop, and they just go, "Hey!" 
But it definitely wasn't me, and it didn't happen. Gotcha. Oh my God. It's been, it wasn't me. Never, oh. I would never do that. But so it's yeah. just things you do yeah. that just happens. And you know, I mean, yeah. Dude, before the internet, man, we had to. We that's what we had to do. <laughs> yeah. So touring I was with my friend. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was no, just gonna no, say no. touring with 311, and no doubt, uh, you got to spend you know quite a bit of time with with all of them. I'm sure. Did you notice any yeah. major differences in the way they leave lead their tour lives, like pre-show, after show, that kind of thing, or did they vibe pretty well? They well, the thing is, they're both kind of the same. You know yeah. what I mean? They, they worked so it, it was so like they're the same kind of style of of they worked well together. Like those, no doubt, 311 shows were fucking good. Yeah. You know, it's like kind of like the the no doubt early uh well the so I would say the sublime thing but it was it's a little bit more it was more it was more a better vibe with the 311 thing than it was with like sublime because sublime there you know there's a lot of issues that were going on with those guys and so you never knew what you're going to get. Mm. You know. Um but I think I think the the 311 no doubt things they both was the vibe is great i have a great picture of of gwen and she's got a she's a just got done working out and it's like in philadelphia and her she's got a tank top and up over her stomach and she's wearing like these sweats and you know and the guys are all kind of set down and then peanut i think's over on one side and chad's over on the other side and like uh you know walt and fucking angela are hanging out it's like we were doing a we were doing a festival in Philadelphia and it's like the three eleven fishbone and no doubt mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. all together. And it was wow. just, you know, it was, it was that, I mean, music was fucking good then, man. You know, you had that shit and it was like fucking, it was, they don't do that anymore. There's nothing like that anymore. That's kind of a little watered down, but to yeah. me, it was important that that time of music was really important in my life. Yeah. So I agree. So let's talk, kinda, let, let Let's talk about when you when you started working with uh, 311. That was uh, 97. Was that when you first started? or? I, I started on the Transistor Tour. Transistor. Right when we started that up. Yep. You know? So, yep. I, but but I was around during the Blue Album because of No Doubt opening up for... Right. You know, and at that, ta at that time, No Doubt, it was like there's two, there was, there's three kind of three different tours that was going on that we kept on doing it was a 311 no doubt everclear no doubt and bush and no doubt and um bush. and and at that time that was when tragic kingdom was kind of jumping up blowing up mm -hmm. so so 311 was doing their blue album and finishing all that up and then tragic kingdom i think was i think it's around the same time which is blowing up mm -hmm. too so from that going from that the tragic kingdom and as soon as tragic kingdom got done um yanni and them said hey do you want to come and do the the 311 tour and, and take care of nick you know and and i'm like all right let's keep this thing going you know and, mm -hmm. and you know just so you know as that time too is with and i hate to go back but you know doing all that doing all that early no doubt stuff and and exploding that those basically it was like Two and a half years of just touring the world yeah you learn a lot of stuff you learn how to do things you learn how to tech and you know and get put yourself put in weird situations because you know for the longest time i was the only guy on stage and i would have gwen running around everywhere wow. taking care of gwen taking care of adrian take you know doing the whole band and it would just be me dealing wow. with all this shit and you know and we're going in and we're doing these major festivals with oasis radiohead garbage you know whole wow. you know all these big big acts and i'd be the only guy on stage when all these guys are all stacked God. with all their crews right so i busted so i busted my ass you know and i learned a lot and i got i don't know i think a lot of the guys that now that i became friends with that were that remember me from them they always say that you know they had a lot of respect for me because i was just I was all over the place, you know, and I, and I wanted to learn and, and trying to figure this out. And I had a lot of my plate, you know, so, but I think that's also what helped me with 311 is I was the only guy on three on the, that tour, or maybe I might've had somebody to help me at the time, but they saw that I was kind of, I was 
you know, I was willing to work and, you know, mm-hmm. do hustle yeah. up. So, yeah. so I think that's what helped me with 311 getting in there. So, yeah. Work, yeah. Or maybe because I like to party. That's what it was. <laughs> that helps too. <laughs> Who was all uh, working with 311 when you started? Was it Yeti, Trevor? When I started, when I start, when we were doing the on the Blue album, it was it, Trevor wasn't there yet. It was oh. it was who was it? Mikey? Is it Mikey? Who was from uh, Omaha? That was their friend. Do you remember? No. Slam. Yeah, like, yeah, like what is it? Was it Slam? Maybe that's who it was. Curly hair, blonde curly hair. Might be. Yeah. Do you remember that? Actually, remember English? Yeah. Yeah. A Brit. Oh, she, no, I think he's from Omaha. Really? Got it. Yeah, but I don't think Trevor was there yet. You know, he might have came in like a little bit towards the end. Mm-hmm. But um, but Yeti, Scotch, Yanni. Um, yeah, I forget who the other guitar tech was. I thought he was from Omaha. He's one of their friends. Mm. You know. So. Okay. But uh, yeah. I don't, and then, and then, um, yeah, and then Trevor came in. So when I came in to work for them, it was this guy, Mike, that was taking care of Peanut. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was stage manager. Um, I think it was, was it Mike? And then Yanni was tour manager. And then we, we got a production manager. Um, Scotch was doing front of house. Um, Greg Nelson, who's who was doing monitors, I think at the time, and uh, Greg Greg basically is, he's now mixing Pearl Jam. So as soon as, and also too is when he got done with uh, with um, on that tour when he got because Incubus and Sugar Ray were a lot of the openings for us. So he got the Incubus mm-hmm. gig mix in front of house for them. So yeah. Awesome. I hope 311 yeah, and Incubus get on. back for that tour. Yeah, you should ask Yeti who that is, because I because I forget who's what his name was, but I, I just tried to look it up. I around. couldn't find anything. Yeah, maybe they killed him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> somewhere along know, the road, somewhere. I know there was somebody else. I know there was somebody else. So Yeti was but. saying there was one guy that was like, eh. So maybe maybe something happened there. Yeah, maybe he w- maybe he didn't last as long as I thought he did. So maybe I just wasn't paying attention. It was just I had, like I said, it was, I was busy man, you know, just trying to. And then opening up, opening up, it's like, it's your time to set up and your time to get off, and it's you're done. So it's, you know, you're doing, you're not really hanging out as much. Yeah. So, well, let's do this next one out of order, Jay. Jay. Uh... There's a question uh, about Transistor. Do you have any outstanding stories or memories or any big, uh, you know, funny moments that, or or not so funny moments that might have happened during that tour? I don't. I'm you know it's weird. Like you always you, you you do you remember the thing with as in my job, I'll remember well I, at the time when it happened. You always remember the shitty ones because right you know because you're just like fuck the shit went down. It's like but. I don't know. It's like I can't really think of that many shitty ones happening. There was a lot of funny things that we did on that tour. There was one time um, where we did this thing where you know about the uh, the after show parties when and the uh, and the strip tease thing. Do you know anything about that? You you know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, he beat us to the punch with this, <laughs> but okay. Yeah, we 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 heard we've heard about that a little bit. You just make sure that he lets truth be known to who bought him, who got him the leather G string. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, from did. a store called Throb yeah, in totally. Atlanta. <laughs> I go, do you have leather G strings? The lady's like, uh, yeah. I go for men or big people. She goes, what? Like how big? And I was like, oh. Like <laughs> big size. and she's like, I might have one and I couldn't believe it fit him perfect. Like, holy crap. <laughs> and Tim got him a blue and silver cape. 
so there's there was some there was like I was a male stripper, ex Chippendales dancer, and so you know I used to just make extra money because that's what you got to do when you're putting yourself through college. You know, just you know after the show, just making those dollar bills. So, but there was a thing that there's a thing that was really funny that we were playing the Greek in San Francisco or uh, Berkeley, and everybody had Halloween costumes, and I'm not. I'm not a Halloween costume guy. I don't give a fuck. I don't <laughs> care about. I don't care about. If if I'm gonna wear I'm a, co- a Halloween costume, it's gonna be like something just super super stupid. Like I was the John three sixteen guys for six years. For six years, remember that guy, <laughs> the with the with the John three sixteen t shirt. They would play at all the sports or sports thing. He had a beard and a big uh, right. rainbow wig and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was that guy. So just the weird stuff that you would never. You gotta go, huh? Oh, that guy. But I'm not I'm not a real real Halloween guy. So everybody was kind of like going, dude, what are you wearing? You're not gonna wear something, you're not gonna wear anything. And I'm like, no, no, no. And then when Chad during the Chad drum solo thing, I don't know what it was, but Greg, um, Greg Nelson goes, because you gotta go out there, you gotta go out there. And I just go, and at that time there was hardly any guitar changes with nick you know there was he wasn't doing he was playing like hardly any guitar at that time so it's just every so i had a little bit of time to kind of you know kind of chill out and i don't know what got on me but you know the old basketball shorts shorts that everybody was wearing at the time that you mm-hmm. know was very very popular so i just decided i was gonna fucking jam them up my butt and make them into like little bikini bikini um kind of underwear and just took my shirt off and right when there's at the time right before chat or uh nick does the guitar the drum solo he takes the guitar i grab the guitar from him or something like that and just fucking oh no no it was, wasn't the it wasn't the solo but i went and did a guitar change like with my shirt off and um the thing shoved up my ass and <laughs> and Nick kind of looked like, what the fuck? And Chad kind of like just kind of threw Chad off. And it's, and so it was like going, they're all, what the fuck's going on? You know, like just totally just threw them all off. Like they didn't know. Like, so it was one of those moments where, but ever since then, at that time, this started kind of going on to where Tim was wearing like this, he had this cape, like it was a Superman kind of cape. So after that, it just became kind of a regular thing where I would show up and wear my outfit. Entertain know? the troops. <laughs> Entertain the troops. And there was, you know, I remember we were playing. Um, we were out. There's a show in Omaha that we did. I think that's that was filmed. And I went out and did. Came out in my little, I shoved the things on my, my, but the, on my, Whatever I shoved him my ass or whatever <laughs> I just shoved him my ass, but I kind of put him up my, made him into like a g-string like or whatever, yeah. took my shirt. And so when Chad, so what the deal was, they were gonna push Chad's drum riser into the center of the stage, and um, and then and as he's doing his drum solo, and I was gonna do a dance to his drum solo, right? And it was, uh, and Chad had no idea that they were gonna push him down the middle or it was gonna, any of it was gonna happen. It was kind of the end of the tour thing. And that was kind of a memorable moment. And then I, you know, and it's really fucking funny. We're always laughing about it, you know. And then uh, one time when I was out with the Offspring on tour, the Boston's were were uh, were opening up for this. And all of a sudden, Dickie goes, Donnie goes, I was, I was, uh, I was in the back of the bus, and there was this VHS tape of said 311 on it, and I'm watching it. And all of a sudden, 
you come on there doing some kind of fucking dance. Because what I would do is anything that Chad was, because Chad wasn't doing the same, you know, Chad was mixing up his drum solo every night. It'd be kind of different. But right. anything that Chad would do, I would react to that, whatever Chad was doing on that video. And so it's kind of, that's kind of what made it funny. So like Chad goes a little, I would go like try to, mm-hmm. and right. so I still, we started kind of feeding off and just laughing off of each other. So, but he like Dickie goes, yeah, dude, he goes, so I don't know how long that video was, you know, brought people saw, how many people saw that video. Was that was in the large funny. show detail? The first <laughs> one? What's that? Was that, was that included in the first, uh, in large show detail? I don't know. No. Did it come out on something? I just I remember know. somebody naked running around on the bus, and it wasn't just Peanut. So I just thought maybe that was you. I'll have to go back and look. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Half there's naked. Some, you know, there, there's like uh, there's some just funny shit. Just, yeah. just shenanigans. You know, I remember just walk. I remember walking through like a loadout, and um, and seeing the truck drivers and like, you know, the truck drivers all these big macho dudes, and I'm calling them out like, hey, what's up? <laughs> And they don't know how to fucking react to any of that shit because they're like tough guys. And You're right. like all the stagehands are just going, what the fuck is going on? And we're just, just having a good time. You know what I mean? It was just, it was, it was fun. Yeah. So. Very good. Yeah, I believe it. I believe at the Halloween show, I think I remember that Nick called out Sugar Ray for not dressing up too. Give it up one time for Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray. Hey, it's a way. They didn't dress up. What a bunch of pussies. Uh, yeah, that's what happened. Uh, so, so yeah, th- that was what happened. The, the cape was from Tim's costume. That's what it was. It was like a, and I had that for years. And then, and that turned into actually, yeah, it, it was, you know, at the time we were, we were, we had a brand new bus. And um, it was like one state of the art crew bus. Our old bus driver Donnie Silva, rest in peace, man. He was one of my favorite guys in the whole entire world. And I remember him saying one time, "Remember the Prodigy song? Um, I forget what it was. Just really fucking." But we had the bus basically fire stepping off. Yes. And just we were all dancing on the front. The front of the bus is coming off the wheels because we were just up there just dancing <laughs> around. It was, it was such a great time. You know what I mean? It was fun. And we also had, and you know, the intro of it, it was the first time the buses had like the Star Trek doors where you push the button and the thing goes, slides open. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of the start of it. They would just go, like, start playing the song and then I just push the button, this door slide open <laughs> and the life to be damned. And yeah, I was just making some extra money. Like I said, put myself through college. You know? <laughs> so that was that was always the the thing, like whispering girls' ears and going hot breath. You know, because you know if you've been to those places, they they whisper in your ear some randomly word. <laughs> so I just would say hot breath. It's like you're so hot, hot breath. <laughs> I don't know. I've never been to those places, but that's what I heard. Oh. So, but yeah, it you know, and he said it. Yeah, I would come over to Mark's bus every once in a while and it'd be fucking do a private <laughs> dance for for some mix of a couple hundred bucks. It was great. It was do you, great. Do you still have the G string? You know what? I think I finally got rid of it. You know, another thing too, that turned into like the whole offspring intermission. That was added to the offspring where I would come out in a cape. And uh, no, in a robe, and then they would go do the intermission, and the band would sit behind them, and then I would come up and I'd take the robe off and be sitting in my g-string with my my cape that Tim gave me, and do like wave my hands back into the air. Wow. You can you can see it on um, at Woodstock, the Woodstock videos from the Offspring. Oh, really? There, that's that's what's crazy about me. Like I I look back and I'm going, what an idiot. You know, I did that. You know, it's like, but it was fun. But I would yeah. never do that shit again. But it was fun because right. it was just the time. It was the time. But like, I remember my mom said, my mom found out about it and she like saw the video and she's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> well, she didn't. She didn't say the f word, but she's like going, "What?" Right. 
<laughs> but yeah, there was a massive amount of people waving their arms back and forth and, you know, doing it at Reading Festival or Leeds Festival and just seeing all these people just reacting. It was, it was crazy. It was, you know, but there's also beer bottles being thrown at me, fucking coins and, you know, and all kinds of shit. Right. When po- I remember getting nailed in noodles going, dude, you don't have to do this every night because <laughs> I just got nailed so good. I'm like, I'm all right. I'm all right. Just got to put myself through college. Yeah. So, but well, yeah, they, they made a shirt of it too. Oh, wow. So well, when, when 311 and the offspring went out, I remember they were coming back from doing the drums and applied science one night and noodles comes up and just in his, in his boxers and hands peanut his face. Oh man. They're a good you know, band so it's too. just, you know, yeah, good fun. Yeah, they're good guys too, man. I really love the, you know, I've been pretty lucky. There's hardly any, I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily, I kind of keep to a certain genre of music that I work for, you know, and I've been pretty lucky with having some really pretty big bands, you know, and I, I normally don't work for like metal bands and stuff like that. It's kind of, I keep it kind of alternative because that's just what I'm into. Yeah. If you want to hear it every I, night. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like, to me, I don't want to go out on a tour that I'm just, you know, remember, I'm a punker and not like a new punker. I'm kind of an old punker. I like that style of music. And so, but I do love, I do love the Chili Peppers when they came out. And that's kind of, you know, and I don't know if that's an all right thing to say on the 311 podcast. Sure but it is. Fans of music. There, it's like, you know, there wouldn't be no 311 if it wasn't Chili Peppers from what I understand because they fucking. Yeah. You know, they, they exposed everybody to that, mixing it up. Well, I saw the Chili Peppers when I was in, in like, ninth grade, and they played in Fender's Ballroom in, in Long Beach, and is when Hillel was still in the band, is right when the first record came out. So that was such an influence on me because it was like, I was like, wait a second, this is a punk show, and they're playing all this funky music, and it's like, and it blew my mind because I had no idea what, you know, what this was about you know it's like and then they're wearing socks on their cocks and they're fucking just doing their thing and and i remember coming back to school like people going the red hot chili peppers dude what are you like and it's like they had t-shirts but they're they're all standing there with socks on their cocks and they're like you're gay or whatever and I'm like going you guys have no idea what you're talking about you know what i mean this is like you're missing out on it's like Next thing you know, they're all in love with the Chili Peppers. Yeah, right. You know? So it was just one of those things where it's like, dude, I don't care. It was just the music was so important, you know what I mean? And and with them mixing it up with the rock and the funk and the punk and, you know, it's just like, man, it just changed my whole thing. Mm-hmm. You know, but I've been, you know, I just, I keep to a certain veneer, you know, certain, mm-hmm. you know, just a little bit. I just try to stay away from like kind of just shredders and metal bands. And I don't know. To so. each his own. All good. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have yeah. quite a roster of bands you've worked for. I, I, I would have no yeah. complaints. That's yeah. Pretty, dope. yeah. <laughs> pretty lucky. I'm yeah. pretty lucky. I'm lucky. I've, I've been, I'm pretty stoked with my life. So, so you rejoined them again yeah. around universal pulse three eleven. Yeah. Uh, uh, did you, did, how, you know what, what was it like coming back after a break and uh, did you go on the first cruise with them the first cruise was one of the first kind of the first part of it that was right when i first came back you first came back all right you know and it was like that was like i think you i think it we did like a, a week's worth of shows before that before the huh. cruise mm-hmm. that was like my first time back and it was great man because it was everybody welcomed me with open arms and now this but now i was working for tim so but it was, it was, you know, it was, it was fucking great to see everybody again. And it was family mm-hmm. and it was, there was no question about, about like where they're, who I was. And, you know and I mean? It wasn't, I wasn't the new guy coming in there, you know, with Eric Hillman there and Manly there, mm-hmm. you know, and, and Bellis and, you know, and, and Scotch was back. And, um, you know, it was, it was, they were all, they're all welcoming, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was, it was great. It was good. It was great. That, that first cruise was amazing. Dude. I was kind of dreading it. 
you know? I was like you going, dreaded it? well, no, I was coming into, it, I was dreading. I'm like going, man, this is going to be fucking crazy. We're not going to be able to get around any, it's going to be 311, 311, 311 in our face. And I'm like, it's like, man, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. It's like, how am I going to do this? I don't drink. I don't smoke. What the, you know, it's like, what, what, dude, as soon as I got on that fucking boat, I was like, this is fucking awesome. It was like, it was like going, because here's the deal. Everybody on that bus has one purpose. They love 311. And there was mm-hmm. nothing nothing more important how stoked everybody was. Mm-hmm. And as that, I was like going, man, this is great. I fucking love this. And the silent disco is my favorite thing in the whole entire world. That is really cool. Yep. They had yeah. silent disco on that one? I didn't know that. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But it, whenever we discovered it, it was the best thing in the whole – because it was like just sit back – and laugh your ass off as the squeaky shoes totally. are going, eep, 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 eep. and everybody yelling over <laughs> each other on headphones. And I would just sit sit on the side drinking my diet pep or my Pepsi's or whatever, diet Pepsi's or whatever I was drinking at the time, and just laugh my fucking ass off because it was like free comedy. Yeah. <laughs> so it was great. I love it. was my favorite thing. So yeah, that was Silent Disco is definitely a blast. <laughs> yeah. I can only yeah. take it in doses, though. It's like I can only go for probably like an hour, and then an hour is a long time. Watch. An hour is a long time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you won't catch me on the dance floor, but you'll catch me watching everybody with their squeaky shoes because it's fucking funnier than shit. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. just, you just squeaky you just shoes. hear it because you know this. You know the songs like you you hear this whoop there it is you know random like half the crowd is going whoop there it is and then you hear um all small things or whatever a blink 182 thing yeah and you, just, you just laugh you need to start laughing because you just yeah. it's funny because they don't they, and it's funny because people don't know they're screaming so loud <laughs> and and they're like, drunk and they're talking to, yeah they're they're wasted which is funnier than shit you know what i mean it's like and um and it's like they're talking over the headphones, so it's it's great, you know. Yeah. So I love well, it. for the for the last few cruises, they've closed out the night with silent disco, mm-hmm. late night until like I don't know quarter. I don't know if it's three in the morning or two th- in the morning. Quarter to three, I think. Yeah. One. But that first cruise, the place to be was the discotheque, where Soul Man played until he could just not he couldn't stand up oh. anymore. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it was like one one morning was probably like four o'clock in the morning is when he was like, all right, guys, I'm done. I know. And the place is packed. I mean, he could have yeah. kept going until daylight. But that silent the, or that the, the discotheque was like one of my favorite things of that first cruise. And just DJ I, Soul Man closing down every night. And then they don't do that anymore. There's not even really a club, you know? Yeah. I went and did the Floggy Molly tour and I was like expecting kind of the same thing. I was like, oh, they're going to have this and that. And it was nothing like that. I'm like, they only played, I was like, they only played once. And they weren't, I'm sure they had like little things going on, but it was nothing like that 311 cruise. And I was Mm -hmm. like, and I'll compare that to everything because it's like, there's so much stuff going on with the 311 cruise. It's like the band, you know, the band at, I remember that they had a lot of stuff going on all over the boat. Mm-hmm. Well, at least Nick and Nick and Peanut, you know what I mean? They had a lot of stuff going on um, all over the boat, and it was cool. But the Floggy Mall thing is they're just kind of hanging out. But, you yeah. know, another the, the other difference with that, too, is on the first cruise, I don't think people realized they could sneak weed on. They were nervous because it was like yeah. this note. So everybody was drinking a lot more than what they normally drink and not smoking weed. So everybody was kind of like – Kind of the, the balance of everybody wasn't like you'd see a lot more fucked up people getting fucked up earlier because they they didn't have weed to smoke so they're just gonna get fucked up drinking right. so it was kind of mm-hmm. like watching everybody go falling down because it was just people getting shitty because they're like oh fuck you know so now then edibles are so it's so much easier to take edibles on on the cruise than right. anything so you just do that instead I saw Puffy know, yeah. sitting on the deck with a full glass piece. And a circle oh, this really? time, yeah. Like, so it people have moved beyond that nervousness, oh, yeah. I believe. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, when I did when I did the three eleven crew, I mean the uh, the Foggy Molly thing, it was they were um, it was all you can drink, right? And oh. to me, that's and so the first day as we're leaving, everybody's like free alcohol, so they're just fucking just jamming 
you know, just getting so wasted. But after that, it was like, after that first night, it kind of mellowed out because everybody was yeah. so wasted the first night. They were like, oh, yeah. maybe. This is back a little. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll just kind of take it back a little bit so I can yeah. don't have to sleep all day. So. Oh, it's a marathon. Yeah, those, marathon, not a sprint, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love those cruises, though. They're so fun. I loved them. They were, yeah. They're a blast. Being on my little balcony, just sit there and just and hearing music and just go do a little walk and go get a go get a, a milkshake me and dolan you know <laughs> yeah so yeah. there was uh that was turks and caicos yeah yeah yep. i don't know the guy there was a know. guy who jumped off the boat while we yep. were there yeah yeah that was smart than that yeah what a dummy <laughs> i know like, hey if you're watching like if you're watching seven, dude that was two. that was a dumb move yeah i mean yeah the water wasn't even that deep to be honest no that would be no scary. Well, the thing is, people don't realize it's the the boat. It's massive. That's not that's a huge drop. That's yeah. not like diving off. It looks like it's not that far, but it's far. You oh, know, yeah. it it's a it's a big jump. You know, so I just so remember, funny. I remember coming back and right three eleven was gonna play as we were leaving, and six man came up and was holding up his badge. You're like, don't be this dude. Oh no. <laughs> Did you get off the boat at Turks and Caicos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, was that was the first one, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's where we played on the beach, wasn't it? No. Were you on that um, cruise that, too? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was probably my that favorite was a good one too. That that was my favorite too. The one where it's kind of like the boat or whatever, it's like the pirate ship or whatever. Was that yeah. Like that that one. Half yeah. Moon Bay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good that, one too. I, that island was so amazing. I mean, the water was so clear. It was like swimming in Avion. I mean, yeah. And I just love the layout of that island. And I, re I remember whenever a lot of people were going back, me and my partner, the concept, Mo Concepcion, uh -huh. I was like, dude, let's not get on the boat right now. Let's just walk that way as far as we can. And just relax for a little bit. Yeah. And we just walked yeah. down there and there was probably like maybe like 50 people left on the island. And I was just sitting there just going, oh, my God, this is this is heaven right here. This is where I want to live. Yeah. Yeah, that was that I love. I, I, you know, man, I would love to go on another cruise, you know, because that was fun. That was so fun. You know, now yeah. I've heard on that. So 311 guys, if you're if you're watching this. I want to go on the cruise. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard so. on that second cruise that that the the beach show was kind of a technical. Yeah, because of sand. Sand sucks. And and, sand and it wasn't dock, so it was t the tenders. The boats had to take oh, the, you yeah, to because the of island the gear, too. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah so, you know, because the thing is, we're trying to take everything as much as we possibly can take over there. You know, mm -hmm. to make to do the show. And it's just like this, the elements is sometimes you got to, it's kind of my job is like dealing with that kind of elements and get the stuff on and off. And, you know, too, so, you know, if it wasn't, it wasn't the, it rough, the sea rough at one, or is that something else I was, I'm thinking of maybe some other new year's thing I did, but that's another thing too, is if, if you have the gear on the tender and the, and the, and it's a rough sea or stormy, to get the gear off onto the boat with the boat kind of going up like this and get every transfer thing, it's a, it's a battle. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a long time. So, so yeah, that's, I don't know how much gear we brought over there because, you know, at that point we didn't really think about cutting down some of Tim's rig with that stuff, hmm. you know, which I'm sure if we, if I ever did or something, I would suggest go do Let's We got to think of something. We got to think of a party rig or something, just the basics, nothing mm -hmm. crazy. You know, take a little, little amp, take a couple of little small amps and back up one and then, you know, just a pedal board, find out what you need and, you know, do all that stuff. So, so let's talk about the 311 Powwow Festival. How was that experience for you other than extremely hot? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You know, they're all, it's weird. It's like they're all gigs. It's, yeah. You know, it's like they're all gigs. It's like just as long as I have a hot shower after we're, you know, well, somewhere we, to clean up. I'm, that was a unique a bathroom. one. So we were just. Yeah. 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 That was, you know, I don't remember if it, for me, it was fine, you know, but I don't know for people camping, 
you know, I'm, I'm doing a different style of camping. I'm on a bus and I'm mm, kind of right. out of the element. So it's like I can walk into a place that's got air conditioning. You know what I mean? So it's so it was great for be, you. <laughs> well, I mean, I think we had an issue with like with with a Tim drug. I think we had mm. something up with like there was a wah pedal that went down. I think, I, but I don't know. But it's like, you know, that's the kind of shit. Like, now you brought that up. Thanks. I've been trying to get rid of that in my head. But like, causing me nightmares for years and years. And now you're bringing this up. Because of one wah pedal? <laughs> Come on, man. You, you know, got to have thicker skin than that. Triggered. <laughs> so, but yeah. You know, that's weird that you remember. It's like, I, I just finally remember. Like, I think we had an issue with the wah. For, but, but yeah, it was fine. Yeah. You know, it, I mean, shit happens like that. You know, you got to kind of yeah. be prepared. Yeah, definitely. So that's why you're there. And it's like, you, you know, exactly. And, you know, and kind of make sure you try to fix it in a timely manner, and, you know, and, and the show must go on. So, but did it rain too as well for the power? I don't remember rain. I'm not sure. I know it was like stupid Just hot. So hot. God. Yeah. I missed out. I missed out on that one. Yeah. Oh, I really? Did too. Yeah, that was fun because I was kind of re- like when I was thinking about it, I was thinking of like the Juggalo thing. It was going to be something crazy like that because I remember we took we took um, golf carts around the camp and saw all this stuff there and stuff. And like, like man, like this is kind of it's really fucking cool. Have they done? They haven't done another one, right? There's only one. Not like that. Mm-hmm. No, they did do a series of live shows last year that we went to uh, New York, Chicago, and L.A. where they played the first six albums in order, you know, and then yeah. some extras at the end. But of not each like night. their own festival. But no, it wasn't. No. Yeah. Not like not camping and festival. Like no, that. no. Yeah. Yeah. One club in New York, and then it was House of Blues in Chicago, and uh, L.A. Mm-hmm. was the Wiltern. Yeah. Yeah. Man. It's dope. But, but everyone yeah. remembers that Pow Wow. Because of that, because it was like a huge thing with them playing Transistor in its entirety, mm-hmm. and the camping, be- and it, it was just a one-time thing that happened. Very you know unique. I mean? So it's it special, stands special, out. special thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's cool. I, you know, that that's I, you know, that's kind of the biggest thing about my job is like, I feel like even though I'm not playing this stuff, I'm putting together stuff, and people are gonna remember this stuff for the rest of their lives. You know, and and. And that makes me happy because it's, you know, even though I'm not the one making the music, but I put it together, you know, and, and was part of that. Big part of the production. Memories. Yeah. And, and the memories are forever, you know, for these people. So Definitely. I feel like I'm, it's it's kind of a cool thing about my job. So And that's why I wanted to do this, too. It's kind of this podcast is kind of to spotlight those people that help make these memories come, you know. It's yeah. not behind just the, the band. There's so yeah. much behind it. And yeah. we, we want to talk to everybody we can, like, just get their stories, let people know they're there, you know, give yeah. them some love. It's weird. It's, you know, I had this on Pearl Jam. We had uh, one of the girls on one of the girls on the tour. She goes, my first concert was the Offspring in, in Alaska. I go, oh, I was there. Yeah. And I was like going, and she goes, I was little. I'm like, going, I'm fucking old, <laughs> you know. And then, and then uh, one of the guys that works for Fender, one of the main guys that works at Fender, he goes, Yeah, my first concert is no doubt in Arizona. And I go, Really? It's like I'm fucking old. <laughs> <It's such> <laughs> fucking... <laughs> but that's the thing is like they remember that because some like when you hear stuff that you've done and like you know even Trish, you know what I mean? She remember, you know, and you'll she'll say, oh, Donnie, I remember from you from no doubt or whatever, you know. It's like, and you know. I don't know if she, she, I just think she might have been too young for no, the 311 at the time, but, you know, I don't know. But it's good the to make. 311, no doubt. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it was 311, just 311. But it's definitely, she, you know. I'm you know, trying so. to think when I first met her. She's was... stoked right now that we're talking talking about her. This yeah. Thing. Hi, Trish. <laughs> Hi, Trish. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hey, Come um, <laughs> I, I yeah I, I can't actually can't remember the first time I met her I, and I want to say it was the first cruise but I I'm pretty sure I knew her before that well so that's, that's when like she kind of that's kind of when she's like going that's when she was kind of hitting me up about she's like are you you know were you uh, and I go yeah you know oh 
so that's kind of where, where really we really started connecting you know and that kind of a friendship so it was from that i believe so yeah he's one of my favorite people you know he's a so, great human i love yeah. trish so there you go trish is stoked <laughs> we'll clip <laughs> this out like right away and send it to this her was, yeah <laughs> You owe me money. Give me money. <laughs> well, let's let's talk a uh, three eleven music a little bit with you. What what's some of your favorite album songs? I have Just... to look. There's one song that they do that I don't that I, uh, God I can't even remember. It, but I remember there's 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 songs that they don't play hardly ever, and I can't remember anything. Well, we're good at name that um, tomb. So if you want to hum it, no, we, but we I can can't. Guess. But you, you, I'd have to put the dial down and like listen to it and I go, oh, that song. Because mm. I remember like, you know, going telling like Essay or Tim and going, man, it's so fucking funky and it's just so good. It's like, why don't you always play? Why don't you? You got to play that. Come on, play that. <laughs> uh, it's like that. I go, guys, fucking, that's a good one. You know? Yeah. We, oh, we we get you there. Yeah. I think I think I think we all have that. Where oh, it's yes. like Yeah. Eh. We'll just call it yeah, Beyond I... the Greatest Hits. That's what we'll call yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I you know, as far as as far as music, I gotta fucking you know, it has to be in front of me and I gotta kinda go, Oh, I love that one. I love mm. I love it when they fucking you know. So um the one that they never fucking um fuck the bullshit. It's like, why? Come on, guys, play that fucking song at the very end. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Why? You know that would that would piss me off. Sometimes we do these festivals, and it's like, you guys right now can just end this festival and just fucking come out on top and crush it. Play <laughs> fucking bullshit as you fucking your last song. They see you later, and you guys won. You know what I mean? It's like that's. To me, that's when I'm working for a band. That's what I want to see. It's like bands go out there and they fucking walk away and say, yeah, we fucking crushed it, you know? And that's what makes me happy, too. Mm -hmm. It's like, because I feel like, okay, I'm part of this and the band just fucking nailed it, you know? Mm -hmm. Even though I, you know, I'm just hanging hand guitars or whatever, but, and then when they do it, it's like, I feel, you know, it feels good. Well, listen, right. man, the same thing you said about well, No Doubt earlier and how the ingredients change. You were a part of that ingredient that brought you know 311 to all of us so yeah you should you should yeah. feel good about it be proud it's uh you brought a lot of joy yeah. to many of us yes and and think about how many yeah. other people that were their first concerts you know you two or three of yeah. them came up and yeah. told you that but every night there was somebody new that was having their mind blown so yeah yeah it's good work man a lot of memories being made and i'm pretty stoked i was part of a lot of that stuff so you know mm -hmm. and so i gratitude i'm lucky yeah i'm always like i'm very lucky you know what I mean? I'm very lucky, and I'm, I've, I've been real lucky to work for a lot of good people that care for me, and you know, and have my back. So, and 311 is definitely one of those guys. 311 you will know, say Tim. your favorite song is "Lucky." Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. Nah, but yeah, but I get it. I get lucky. what you're saying. But yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Awesome. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to look through the catalog and find out what what song was. But there was one song I just go, man. It's not a hit, but I thought it was just like so fucking cool. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we definitely relate there. There's a lot of deep cuts and stuff that's way better than what's on the cover. You know what I mean? Like if you, yeah, if you yeah. listen, and yep. I get it. I, you know, there's they, you know, it's like they got to play their bass. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. people. Not everybody. Not er a lot of people don't know those deep cuts, and they don't get it. So that's why they have to play the hits, and that's why people are, you know, and every once in a while, there should be a deep cut on every single rec, every single set list. They got to, they should just yeah. throw one, one in there. Yeah. Like two, one or two, just a deep cut, but the red, you know, cause you can just do hits and hits and it's great. But, and then you go, Oh, I love that one. You know, Oh, they played this one on that, you yeah. know, mammoth events that are, they played this one at the rock. So you were to, you know, so it's kind of, they should, you know. Well, and that would, that well. would open up fans to those deeper cuts that they may not have been, familiar with yeah. you know and, and yeah. exactly. broaden it even that, more for the next time yeah that's well, one of the thing that made me such a 311 fan was because i knew their hits and then whenever the 311 day 2004 dvd came out i learned they were so much more than just their hits you know yeah, what i yeah. mean oh yeah there's 
so many songs on there that I was like, what, 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 what? <laughs> yeah. But you got it. But the thing is, is in a lot of people as, as super huge fans of any band, you want to hear those crazy deep cuts that you never heard because that you're such a fan base, but your, your normal concert goer are the ones that are right. going to, unless you're like fish, you know, or who was always changing the, the, the set list and stuff that, you know, or, you know, let's just say Pearl Jam. It's like, you know, it's, it's kind of, it kind of, you can kind of lose a lot of your, a lot of a normal fan base that goes to concert because right. you do play deep cuts, you know, right. and, you're, and you're not playing the hits because people go, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know like any this of this. They, they just played, yeah, I want to hear, I want to hear, um, you know, fuck, whatever, you know, down amber amber whoop, there, down. Whoop, yeah. yeah creatures i want to hear whoop there it is you know i want to hear whoop there it is and it's like they're not playing whoop there it is they're playing all kinds of other songs and they're big hits like right you got it you kind of got to you got to make sure that Bounce. there's a there's a whole different crowd of people mm -hmm. that aren't like hardcore fans that too they help support the band too and you right know, so there's a very it's weird because it's a very small group of people that love that are right, you know, so, but there's a bigger people that come on. Like, we're gonna go out, with my girlfriend or my boyfriend on Saturday, and we're gonna get wasted and we're gonna go to the 311 concert, you know, because we know all their hits. So, yeah, on the radio. So, they're all so I, you know, well, I know SoCal, it's gets, like SoCal gets the worst set lists. I mean, it is just like right there on radio level, you know. Yeah, and hardly ever any deep cuts. So yeah. I still go to the shows because I love them and I just love going to the shows. But Midwest, especially East Coast, gets better set lists, and they do throw in deep cuts every once in a while. But you know, for for the the avid fan, three eleven day is the jam. You know, mm -hmm. you're gonna hear yeah. eighty songs, and you're probably gonna hear your favorite song. Yeah, like the cruise, the cruise. That then that's a perfect example. Of what you just said is like the cruise right. is for nothing but hardcore three eleven fans. The powwow, nothing but for hard. You don't go if you're just a mild radio listener of three eleven <laughs> to the powwow. Because you'll be the, you'll right. be bummed. You're going what? Go what the fuck are they playing? You know what I mean? They're not. Or maybe playing you'd have your any... mind opened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's it's like you know. Yeah, I, you're yeah, right. You're, you're absolutely definitely. right. Yeah. A, you know, a casual but, fan but, isn't gonna. Sorry, they're, they're not yeah. going to know dance hall, you know. Yeah, three eleven yeah. days not for for a casual fan, you know, that just barely knows anything about three eleven. It's for the hardcore fan. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. why it's the three eleven day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like except for this year, playing. <laughs> oh, what's going on with this year? Oh, they're having it. It's just not on March eleventh. It's a couple <laughs> days oh. before. It's a hubbub in the community. Uh oh, because it's on. It's it, they're doing it on the ninth and tenth because it's the weekend, and yeah, yeah. Monday's the eleventh, and so it's a it's a thing. I guess. Yeah, so we well, you know people got to work. Subject. Yeah, you, you know, <laughs> people got to leave. Can't can't take off early in the middle of the week to go for four days to go to Vegas. <laughs> right. They might not be able to. If, by doing that, they might not be able to go the next three eleven day. So. <laughs> So when it's on the weekend, because it might get fired. So, right, right. So yeah, I mean, hey man, nothing's perfect. So at oh, least they're gonna be least... fine. Oh yeah, they're having it. It's gonna be great. New yeah. album coming. Yeah, yeah. Oh really? Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and this last album. this last cruise that just passed, uh, the seventh cruise, was the first time that they were actually at sea on three eleven day. So it was March eleventh. We were out in the middle of the ocean. Mm -hmm. They played the whole set. It was dope. So. Yeah, yeah. That makes up for this. I mean, thing. I thought Essay texted me the other day. It was the first time, you know. He he'll text me every randomly every once in a while. Oh yeah. He goes, oh, he goes, oh, you excited? It finally happened. No doubts playing Coachella, and I'm like, what are you talking about? And he goes, you don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> I go, I don't, I go, I don't. He goes, what? So, but yeah, I you know, I thought he will send funny things back and forth to each other once in a while so and then tim i'll just get i'll get like once a call every once in a while so it's yeah, good to hear from those cool. guys Very so good. i want to see i miss those guys i miss those guys so i miss everybody over there so well, they're in japan they're right now and then they'll be back uh do a couple three or so shows on the east coast and then uh 
I think there might be some California dates mixed in there and then off to Europe for like yeah. a month. So, so three eleven dates crazy. coming up. Yeah, three eleven day too. About, yeah. about time they go back to Europe, man. They yes. they should have they should have been hitting that wow. shit for years. Twenty years. You yeah. know? They they kinda blew that. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but well, that's that's a that's a market they should be hitting they should have been kept on hitting hard, you know? Because yeah. that that's a that's a fan base right there. They can just constantly go over and over there. I mean, you know, we did the warp tour in in Australia, and that was fucking great too. That was a good time. I wasn't sure if you were on that one. Mm-hmm. That was. Yep. We've heard stories from Yeti and Scotch about that. <laughs> that was great because I was working for the Vandals too, as well. So I was work going, mm-hmm. you know, helping it. You know, well, I was I was getting a paycheck from Three Eleven, but I was helping out the Vandals. Right. Because they're my friends too. But it was like that was when Chad broke his foot or something or messed up his hand. And Wrist, then Yeti yep. had to come up. Yeah. So it was it was pretty pretty great. So Josh <laughs> came in and fucking nailed it. So so yeah. We were I was so those guys it was weird the three on the on the three let we were traveling because there's no buses in Australia. I don't know if he told you about this. So we had to rent camper vans. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. The Mad and Max. That, campers I'll, with the... I'll never i'll never forget that because it was like i remember just driving in the middle of the desert and turning off all the lights and just seeing all the stars oh wow and it was just pitch black and we're just out in the you know doing our own thing because it you know we were kind of we were lucky because we had the campers mm-hmm. but I, I i never i never wanted to drive so i was like and there was never a bed in the camper for me but I was fine with like pitching a tent outside because those guys are driving and I didn't want to, I want, I didn't want that responsibility to drive. So I was like, right. I'll sleep outside just because you're driving. You know what I mean? It's no big deal. Yeah. And it was like, I was lucky cause I was able to get showers, you know, cause we'd stay at like KOAs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But that, the warp tour, those guys were all like in passenger van or passenger buses, like Greyhounds traveling across Europe and then pulling up to the gig and then put everybody on the on the warp tour pitching their tents up on the site you know and you don't like sometimes like you're you're coming in at like three o'clock in the morning to set up your tent to go sleep and you don't know if it's on an ant hill or something like that because it's pitch black you know uh-huh. and so and then i remember like the showers and stuff they it'd be like it's kind of like a big giant tent and they'd be like there was a pallet and a hose kind of coming down you know and and that was that's how you got your showers for adding the warp door. Yeah. Wow. It was it, it sounded was rough. pretty uh, pretty it was pretty, rough. yeah. Roughing it. It was rough. It was it was you know, it was like they they issued you a, a sleeping bag because the first show in that part was in New Zealand. So they issue a sleeping bag, you know, and then you get a tent. Or, or maybe they maybe the tents were later on, but they gave you like a little small sleeping bag and that's how you did it in Australia it was it was crazy, wow. you know, but it was fun. You just that was just just the time of your life where I didn't <laughs> you didn't give a fuck. You just did it, you know. Like that. So I think that when we went to we went to we went to uh, Japan, and I have a great. And <laughs> it was a. Uh, Went to Japan and after that we went to Hawaii and finished up the tour for that. You know, the kind of the warp tours ended in Hawaii. And so it was pretty it was pretty good. It's a good time. Blink one eighty two was on that thing. So mm-hmm. Yeah, so I heard Blink one eighty two on that tour it was like screw it and they didn't bother with the buses either and just flew city no. to city. No, they had a they had a they had a I think they had um a trailer or a camper, a couple camper vans too. And the Pennywise guys did too as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. So, but it was, it was fun. That was, that's some crazy times right there. That's uh, you know. quite the career. Lots of bands, lots of, lots of countries, lots of cities, lots of faces. Yeah. Tons of music. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm lucky. Like I said, I'm, yeah. I've been, I don't, you know, I don't want the weird blessed is kind of a weird word for me, but it's like, I feel pretty, you know, that's what it is. That's what it is, buddy. Yeah. So very good. 
Well, and we uh, once this is over, I'm going to have to go update your IMDb database with Chippendale Dancer. Uh, yeah. Add that yeah. to the resume of things that you've done there. So. Get him on well, the you next can go on, Mike. Yeah. I, you can go on my uh, – I have a Yelp page, actually, that I made for fucking myself as, a, <laughs> no as an exotic. And uh, I don't know how I did this, but you're not supposed to make a Yelp for yourself, right? And I Yelp. And somehow I did it, and I think Nick was like Nick or Tim like yelped me or something. It's like gave me. It's like they so rebu- they if you're looking, you. if you, yeah. So I think it's I I don't because I can't I don't think I can look it up myself on my thing, but I think if like go to it was in Long Beach if you're looking for uh at a, a exotic dancers or anything like that no <laughs> like way. my name comes up so but i it, like me and tim were kind of just fucking around it's like going, i should do a yelp for myself and just like just fuck around and you know as a joke and so you know good times multi-talented man <laughs> multi-talented yeah that's hilarious dude so so there you go yeah yep I there know. we go well i Guess we'll kind of wrap this up here. Uh, yeah, we appreciate yeah. you taking the time to uh, to talk to us today. And uh, yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, but I kind of been, been kind of busy, just kind of just going a little fucking oh, full steam. No worries, so, man. No worries. We, this is like kind of the first time I've been able to kind of get home and kind of get my shit together and get my head straight. So cool. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you taking the time. We do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, man. And uh, it's it was great talking to you, Donnie. Man, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. And you know, it, I fucking I miss that. I miss all the fans and stuff like that. And I miss the three eleven guys. There's some great fucking times. Well, hey, so. make sure you check out the series when we release it here, and you'll get to hear some stories and things from your your buddies and some of your you know cohorts, yeah. partners in crime on the road. So check for it out for sure. For yeah. sure. All right, guys. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right. All right, everybody. You thank you. Odyssey signing off. Peace out.